All right, here we are with game number two with White Knights and Pioneer. And this is looking pretty tight. We got ourselves a turn one Venerable Knight, turn two Worthy Knight into a turn three Worthy Knight or turn three Knight of the White Orchid, depending on how our mana base starts shaking out. Definitely going to keep this. Um, we even have a circle of loyalty to really start, start going hard if we can get our board up here. All right, Stitcher Supplier. We're probably playing against uh, probably the Dredge, Dredgeless Dredge, as people like to call it. Didn't hit anything good, so it's good for us not taking a bolt to the face from a Creeping Chill or getting a bunch of annoying Narc Amoebas flying in the sky. Uh, it is a bummer. Our opponent wants to always block with Stitcher Supplier, but... um. I don't think that's a really big problem. Clearing the board is pretty important here. We want to go wide and we want to attack through everybody. Uh, so we're really hoping they have bad mills, essentially, is what we want to do. Again, if you watch the deck tech, you know that I'm cheap. And uh, not... So I don't want them to draw a card. I'm gonna eh, screw it. They can't cast anything right now. Rather have them draw a card actually than put more stuff into their graveyard. Getting a lot more value off the graveyard stuff anyway. So we're gonna toss down a worthy knight here. We got three mana now, which is actually this is very good for us. So next turn we can play Knight of the White Orchid, fetch a planes, and then have two more mana for another worthy knight. Uh, it is a bummer we can't double up the Worthy Knights and start getting double triggers until the following turn, but uh, Circle of Loyalty is going to be two mana the following turn, so. <laughs> Barring our opponent getting some pretty nutty self-mills here, we're in a pretty good spot, I think. Hard casting prize to Malgam, all right. That's the kind of thing you like seeing. All right, so Knight of the White Orchid, trigger. This is where the value town starts, starts coming into play. Definitely searching up a planes. Our land drop, play another worthy knight. All right, so that brings our knight count to four, which makes circle of loyalty two mana. So next turn, we can go pretty hard. You can, uh, no matter what, I mean, not, no matter what, they could sweep the board or something crazy, but I'm feeling pretty good for turn three. That's about as ideal as it's going to get for this deck. We even have the Anthem to follow it up with. Sometimes this deck can kind of fumble if you just get like your Savannah Lions over and over and over again. You're just your two ones for one. Or like a Thalia's Lieutenant with nothing to power up. But ooh, that'd be a good draw. We drew a Thalia's Lieutenant next turn. Ooh, baby. Even a Banalis Marshal. Play the Circle and the Banalis Marshal. Our stuff's going to get big fast. Thoughtseize would be a bummer. I really want to play Circle of Loyalty. Great Henge gets all the love, but Circle of Loyalty in this very specific deck, it does a lot of work. Our opponent really taking their time here with this Watery Grave. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think our opponent is um is gone. They're gone forever. And they're back. And playing it tapped. Ooh, a castle. This is getting spicy. All right, let's go uh, a bodyguard. Trigger, trigger. Gonna select one of the worthy knights here, as that is 
our real our real powerhouse here in the deck. And we're going to just attack with everybody. Sure, they can trade for one of our knights, but at this point, I think the main goal is to just consistently beat down. They are running, like, Assassin's Trophy and stuff, I'm sure. So they could blow up the Circle of Loyalty and have a couple more profitable blocks. Which would be pretty annoying, but... Let's see if that's what they're going to do. All right, so they're just they're just trading here. Taking a lot of damage. What are they milling? Narcomoeba? My deck does not fear one ones anymore. Doesn't actually feel fail. Yeah, man, I cannot talk right now. It's not fear three threes or anything really either. That's fine. Come back. I ain't afraid of you. I wish this triggered that. That would be a fun time. Could draw a history Benelia, trigger it that way. Thali's Lieutenant, I think, is what I really want here. Or Brave the Elements. Brave the Elements is actually probably what I just want. So, I mean, this deck is fairly influenced by a list Sam Black posted before the Once Upon a Time ban, it was kind of a, it was pretty much mono white. It splashed green for Once Upon a Time as well as, what's that card? It's a green, it's like a green white flash card that gives your humans value and stuff like that. Um, and it was running Circle of Loyalty in the sideboard because it was pretty heavily knight based. And it did really well. I think it won a PTQ and... Honestly, I from all of the games I've played with these white weenie decks, these this knight deck is for sure the one that I've pretty much found to be the best. Or for me anyway. It just goes a little bigger. Um you have the explosive draws like this one with Worthy Knight. Uh it has the same weaknesses as the other white weenies decks, which is like black based sweepers. Uh, stuff that gives it minus three, minus three, or minus four, minus four. They're kind of the only sweepers that this deck doesn't really have a clean way of protecting against. Um, if you're really lucky, you can pump your team up so it's just too big. Uh, stuff like Cry of the Carnarium is pretty easy to get around. Uh, the two toughness, is, although very common right now, it would still leave a couple things alive. But uh, basically anything, minus three, minus three, minus four, so Languish... Uh, the Witch's Vengeance, I think it's called, is a pretty tough one to deal with. But, yeah. Doing pretty good right now. Planes isn't the most fun of the draws, but... They got 11 life, 1 blocker. We are bashing hard right now. And they... The, uh, as, the, as the people say, math is for blockers, and our opponent was blocking, and they did the math. So we're bringing Tormod's Crypt, a couple Devout Decrees, a couple Fiend Slayers, maybe a Settle. Knight of Grace is pretty good in this deck. Bodyguard, History. Circle dodges Abrupt Decay, which is nice. We are on the draw, so Knight is good. I actually don't know what I want to sideboard here. Maybe I don't care about Fiend Slayers. My creatures are already pretty good. Um, I don't think it's better than any of the two drops that I am playing. Or it's not two drops, three drops. I think my current three drops are a little better anyway. Maybe down one history, up one Fiend Slayer. Just the life might be relevant. Settle for when they have their nut draws. Loxodons are good and Circle's good. Maybe, although Circle did really do work that last turn, maybe it's not exactly like what we're looking to do. I don't think we need a Fiend Slayer. I'm not even sure if we want a Loxodon. Like, we do want to get big. Um, and a Bodyguard. Let's try this. I 
feel like these decks don't go super heavy on the removal because they're really trying to win just by kind of not comboing obviously because it's not a combo deck but flooding the board fast with zombies with narcomibas doing damage with creeping chills and stuff like that uh definitely gonna keep this we got a planes so we can cast our stuff without taking damage up until turn three got a clean removal spell so what actually would be pretty awesome is if they have like a nut draw they get a bunch of prized amalgams to their graveyard and they get them all back and then we can just uh kill them all I think that's that's kind of what we want to happen all right a citrus supplier didn't hit anything just put some lands in a grizzly in the graveyard it's about about as good as it gets for us knight of grace not a bad follow-up play been super impressed with this card that seems pretty Pretty underwhelming in a format like Pioneer. Uh, did some work back in Standard for me. It was never like a, a true all-star, but it was definitely a solid team player. And uh, in formats where the black removal is premier, there's not not many things better than that. All right, so they're creeping chilling. They are playing the trophy. Okay, I'm not sure if it's a four of or what, but I'll take one creeping chill to the face. Not too worried about that. I should have just play the planes there, but so I can attack here. Not what? Oh boy, misclicks galore. I'm embarrassed. I'm sorry, people. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see here. Next turn. Depending on what happens, I'm thinking. I'm thinking history. It's probably the way we want to go. Tapping a black here, Gurmaggy. Okay. Five five's pretty big. I'm still gonna get the history down early. I want this thing to start getting to work. I can afford to take five damage, and um. I can Declaration and Stone on the following turn. Their graveyard is empty. Not that there's anything in it really of any value. I can even just block with the Venerable Knight, put my token on my Knight of Grace. Knight of Grace isn't getting killed by anything in this deck, removal-wise, so. Our opponent taking damage. Hard cast and a prized amalgam. No problem. Not giving me the option. Yes, create the knight, please. Um, so I think I'm gonna go declaration in stone. Man, I wish these were human knights. That'd be pretty dope. But then this deck would be. If these, if these were humans, this deck would be freaking bonkers. All right, so I'm just going to attack here. They could trade with this, but then I'm just going to make my Knight of Grace bigger. Other than that, it has first strike. I can basically even kill a double block. I fear no zombie. Uh, that would have been fine. I mean, there we go. That makes more sense for my opponent. Yep, they're trying to get some stuff in their graveyard. They need a miracle here. Creeping Chill and a Prized Amalgam. Very good for my opponents. Oh, this triggers on a graveyard, right? Whenever creature enters the graveyard. All right. Kind of an interesting push target. Eh, no, I guess that makes the most sense. <laughs> it would start growing. Creepy Chill is such a busted card. I'm surprised it's not... I mean, I guess this deck is very good, but it's... It seems like it'd be good in standard, to be honest with you. I've played some decks, like some Mimi's deck. Not That's not how I pronounce meme. You know, just like a, a meme-ish deck. 
All right, let's let's untap here. Let's see what we can do. Should I just sacrifice this shit and get it for a billion, or should I save that for next turn? So we save that for next turn. Yeah, considering we're just playing like a pile of knights, we're we're holding our own against Dredgeless Dredge, which is I wanna say a top tier deck, but it's solid. Like it's it's a real deck. The cards it plays definitely feel more real than the pile of nonsense I'm playing. Gonna put that on my Knight of Grace. All right, so next turn we have the option to attack with everybody and sacrifice the Shefnet Dunes to give the whole team a big pump or just do whatever good stuff we have going on at the top of our deck. Either way, we win. <laughs> All right, so White Knights putting in work. Um, yeah, this is this is a fun deck. If you're looking for a White Weenie deck in, in Pioneer, you don't want to spend a lot of money on dual lands. You just... You like feeling the rush of the white weenies. White knights right here. Check it out. Cyborg, not that important. You can probably make a better one. Like, get some rest in pieces and shit. Don't be cheap. Um, but yeah, this is... It's so fun. I have it in paper. I played it at last f I'll probably play it this week because I'm in the process of building some other stuff in paper. And this is just my inter intermin affordable fun deck. Uh, yeah, thank you for watching. This is Robin yeah, Rob with Mulsa 5 with uh, our Punting and Pioneer series. Uh, there's a few punts in there, more just like misclicks. But if you like what you see, please like and subscribe, comment, uh, follow us on, you, you know, just, you know, the, the normal social media, YouTube stuff. Um, thank you guys for watching and have a good night.